Hi, I'm Roderick Reed, and this is the presentation I'm going to be giving at AWEC 2013. It's a slightly extended version of it. Um, it's bigger because I'm only going to get 20 minutes there. I'll be able to say a wee bit more in this time. So, who am I? Who am I representing? What are we doing? This is on behalf of Kite Power Co-op. It's a group of like-minded folk, AWE designers online. We're wanting to progress the field of airborne wind energy by open sourcing and releasing our IP online as open source hardware. Why do this? We believe it's going to make the process more rapid, uh, make things a wee bit more assured, make sure that your systems that you come to implement in projects are going to be much more standardized, uh, rigorously implemented, insurable, bankable, basically. So we're trying to make projects that are going to come along and make it easier in the future for folks to be able to go along and implement airborne wind energy. We just like the whole idea of the thing, uh, so we want to see it happen fast. I'm, like I said, in the windswept and interesting. I've done an awful lot of designs like the wee sketch you can see on the background here. Uh, the people that tend to do this, uh, we are sort of self-motivated. We want to see our future happening. You know, well, I want to see it when I'm 120. Um, we've come to recognize that there is an awful lot of strength in community. You do see it all over the place, certainly on the internet and in software, but through the European Union and just, just all sorts of places where you can see working together works a lot better. So, the other place you see a lot of working together is, is nature, where you'll see a lot of ad hoc uh, accidents that have happened successfully, things that have come together successfully. And in an engineering team who is spread across a network, this can make a structure that's very resilient. This can make an engineering team that say, one person is you know, not well one week, the work is going to be continued. A lot of what the co-op is trying to do is trying to focus the, the knowledge base that we've already gathered on the forums and try and bring together research groups, bring together results um, and work out ways to go forward, work out what is the best method now after all this research um, and the, the new ideas of, of doing this open source hardware have come together from a lot of discussion on the forum, basically. So, there's a lot of different people, everyone's got a different skill set. Uh, it's kind of like, uh, this screen's got a different color balance to my camera screen. It's, you know, everyone's got their own sphere, of, you know, I, I, don't, I don't know what the psychological term is for the capabilities that everybody has, but uh, you can represent different skills like say cycling and sewing and design and uh, kite flying, whatever have you, and on that chart that, that your skill set would comprise, you'd have a different boundary of where you can fulfill tasks. So we're trying to share all of those skills that each of us has across networks so that we can all address uh, different different points, basically, different stuff that needs done, that we've recognized that needs done. Uh, we do have to trust each other across this, and that's, you know, it's quite scary for a lot of people. It's something that you do every day, you know, driving on the road, eating at a cafe, or you, you, you do have to trust people all your life, and it's just a way of getting along. Uh, we've been scared, obviously, by, you know, there's quite a lot of scary chats about, whether it's in the news, about bankers taking all the cash, or whether it's about heading to war here or there, or, and you wonder often what the motives are. This case, it seems like the motives are fairly well set. Everyone's wanting uh, well distributed, clean energy for the planet, and the people that are engaging in this, they're, they're really sort of, they've, they've gone, gone beyond self-motivation, they're kind of working in a heroic almost manner. Now here's where I live, um, not just in this loft space here. Uh, behind here, this, there's another a wall that I'm going to be projecting onto. This is 
going to be a kite loft soon. Uh, I've got a pretty big space for making sails and stuff. But here's where the, the storms that rage against the Isle of Lewis and Harris uh, batter, first of all. You've got to see, comes in off of that and whacks these sand dunes. Now, I just think that they're an amazing analogy for kind of what we're doing here, whereby if those grasses that are formed on top, uh, they're sort of the raw material of life, so is the sand. Uh, you've got the pressure of gravity, you know, in the economy, banks and stuff, trying to push everything down all the time. Trying to, trying to tear it away, you've got the wind, it's kind of building it up, the energy, and in my analogy, this, that's the, the designers, the, the, the guys we are are kind of wind in that analogy. But what, what, what you've, uh, you've got here, again, it's just a happy accident. It's from 14 billion years of nature experimenting, this, this is what's come out, it's this arch shape. And a lot of the time, you know, the island didn't look like this, but bad things, things that didn't work, things that just didn't fit, have been blown and scratched away. You can see the smooth shape of that hill there. But uh, I think we have to take a lot of that into what we do is we've done a lot of experimentation on the networks, uh, on the internet. We've done a lot of experimentation with different models of kites and, and we know the characteristics of a whole lot of different AWE now, uh, excuse me. So the thing that we're trying to solve now is this huge new problem of airborne wind energy. And with that, there's going to be a whole new way of going. When you've got a huge problem, you do have to break out of the original solutions that have got us to where we are. <coughs> when you've got a, a brand new Ma massive problem like we do if we want full utility scale energy from airborne wind energy you have to sort of think out of the box a wee bit you've got to be ready for challenges and surprises um, a lot of ideas that occur to people now that is going to be sort of large scale genius sort of child like thinking or, or theta way of thinking it, it, that's maybe the, the tool you're going to have to play with it. you know if you come up with something and you think, oh, sir, you've made a mistake, don't worry, cherish that mistake and share it on the forums. That's what we've all done so far. And if shit happens, just move on with it. It's, 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 really, it's going to be useful to everybody to share that. And remix these ideas. You know, when, when you come to it, when you build in the next set, uh, uh, the next creation that you're going to come up to, yeah, go for it. And take that, you know, there's an, each little design challenge has its own issues. Bust what you come across, everything, you can work it out in blocky fashion. You can pick out little challenges all the way along, break the massive problems down, and on the forums you'll often find out that we've done it. If you search through for one you know, particular scenario that you're trying to solve for, it's often been done. Experimentation is there. Energy supply is a large network as it is at the moment and in most terms, certainly grid situation is. We've got to design something sort of similar in that, that we've got this huge area of air that we're taking energy out of and we want to be able to focus that down onto large ground-based generators seems to be the chat that we've come out with because yeah, larger generators are much more efficient, easy, uh, faster and why Focusing a large area of air, if you can get the energy out of that properly, is easier with networks so, uh, and arrays. If you can implement arrays, it gives a lot of cost scaling co and it, it just, it's going to help if you can control that array as a one hour. So, where have you, we've seen that sort of thing before, Certainly in microprocessor design and in the build up to the internet where you know, from, from very small transistor scales the first programs that were written were for designing microprocessor sort of you know, expanding what, what was already printed and then that has scaled up massively so we're trying to, some of the most successful designs on that, like your Android phone, that's 
based on open source uh, software and a lot of the, the programming for designing these circuits is open source. So it seems to make sense if we want to bring forward hardware that's going to be performing really large tasks for us and if we want it to be able to scale it'd be a good way to take it forward uh, instead of having to rely on say utilities or governments where, where previously they have well, certainly banks such a long-term view of uh, stable profit where they want the, the money to do the work for them uh, in order for those structures to invest in a project like this they want to see that it's got a long track record of, of having been successful before so because it's experimentation in order to push this forward the, the much more shared and social route seems to make a lot more sense um, so it, it's kind of a, a worthwhile work I've done work in, in some ridiculous places before offshore stabilised satcoms to the extreme of working in learning disabled OT and th those two extremes of communication um, it just it, they teach you a lot about, about, about sharing and, and you know it's good to be able to like work hard and play hard, work on different things and, and balance up what you do, whether that's uh, physical life work balance or whether it's uh, uh, playing, you know, whether it's your extreme sports that I, that I do love or, you know, something crazy like fire walking where, where you learn about the, the heat transfer through skin and charcoal or, uh, it, it's just, it's worth experimenting, it's worth doing things and sharing them and bringing them to everyone. Um, in, in that whole balance, which I believe is so important for so many structures, whether those are economic structures or engineering structures or life, you know, how you can uh, apply yourself. Uh, you know, I think well, you could pretty much apply yoga to the engineering here. Um, certainly, in, in the things that we've made, the, you want to sort of balance a lot of the energy that's going in, you want to balance a lot of the, the, the weight of the structure or you know the tensile strength of the structure throughout against what its function is. So you know the most beautiful um, engineering creations have often taken that step where they have fully analysed, done the, the, the FEA uh, and worked out, here, here is exactly the material that I need to, to perform this job. Now we're focusing lots of air onto small generators, uh, large generators, sorry, focusing lots of air onto large generators. So I've mentioned uh, why, why networking, why doing it uh, as a spread network. Well, certainly in my own case it seems to make sense. I live where in an island, um, see maybe that dog there in that internet map. And I, I want to do my bit, and there seems to be an awful lot of people out there in a like-minded situation wanting to do their bit. And when I first approached the whole situation, I didn't know so much about uh, maybe some of the airfoil plans or some of the tensile structures. Uh, there, were just, there were ideas floating around, and I'd had them through experience of kite surfing and stuff before. And, I'd had various business experiences before. I have been able to pull a lot more of it together, you know, and sort of cluster my ideas a lot more. But without uh, the group that, that's formed on the forums, I, I don't think I, I would be able to do any of this on my own. And certainly, in order to progress these designs further, it's going to take a lot more partnership, even just than the, the Kite Power Co-op setup that is at the moment it's going to have to grow quite a lot more, so the rope manufacturers and uh, the, the net manufacturers that are going to be in the audience uh, in AWIC 2013, they're going to be very important, we'll be able to use their design data, their uh, performance data on their ropes in order to feed that sort of thing into our system. The banks, the, the funding the venture capital, all, all these systems that we're going to have to work very closely with. 
there are engineering and OEM uh, kite manufacturers through the business world who it's, it's going to be very hard to get along without. Uh, like I, you know, I said I was going to make a lot of stuff here, but the kit that I'm going to make in this loft isn't going to change the world for a start. It may help as a wee test and, and examples, but uh, no, scaling up it has, to, has to be done um, with a community. It really has to be done consolidating all the development that, that everyone has, has made so far. I have made out probably that these forums are a friendly, fluffy, nice kind of place to be, but to be honest, uh, a lot of the interaction that's there is quite spiky, quite, quite you know, almost hurtful. And that's, in a, in a competition sense, in an evolutionary sense, that's, that's necessary. It's, it seems a shame that, you know, newbie ideas are maybe taken down sometimes, but we have to be real about what we're going to achieve. We have to be honest about the, the type of devices, the type of future that we're trying to build with this. So it seems that the real conversation that goes on in these forums is, is absolutely necessary. Some of the, the folks that do work, certainly the likes of Joe Faust, who set up the, the space uh, on AWE, uh, on Yahoo, he's an absolute hero of accreditation and we've got an awful lot to be thankful for for what he's done. Um, his, his motivation towards group work there, um, guy's a legend basically. So the whole design space, it does come down to quite a struggle, a wee bit like you know, an evolutionary struggle where you've got this, this large conceptual contention in, in a large you know, DNA pool of, of um, designs and you're playing one and off against the other the whole time and you know, it, the whole group so I've got this idea where you've got one thing following your design, what one control for your design is what you believe and where you think it's going to go but you've got to play that off the whole time to what, what has been said, what the real facts are, what we've learned before. When you apply this way, you're going to eventually find your niche, you're going to find a, a, a centre to work, to work upon, uh, a central point, a middle ground where you can exist, where you, where you, you can apply your designs, but with, you also have to work in that um, FAA, the government regulation space, that's going to exist, you're going to have, you have to target towards all that. So you're going to have to find something that is effective, but something that also creates massive efficiency. Um, the very background drawings on here, you, you've got your Mosser design, but you've also got these cone designs. It's a, that's a bit of a fight again between two different systems there. AWE as it exists, you've got your single lines, your soft kites, your hard, Kites, you're um, generating up there, you've got your ground gen, and it can't really go on being uh, such, such a diverse set. You know, in order for bankers to approach us, they're going to want projects that are very much tick box exercises. Um, it, this, this is a young mutant at the moment, this AWE, it's got a long way to go. But it's got a lot of proof to beat yet. It's a bit like, you know, Betamax versus VHS. Um, hopefully this time the, the, you know, the good designs are going to win out, as I believe that they are. Um, I'm biased, of course. Uh, but for us to, to appeal to mass market, it's going to have to be very simple to imply, you know, implicate this uh, and get what we believe out there working. And it may well be that there is a mix. It may well be that the single line kites, uh, I, th I think they've got great application in wide open areas where they're, they're not so close to population centres. I think the inherent stability of uh, 
ground belay systems and multi-point uh, wing and ground effect systems such as Mothra designs are, are going to be much safer so we'll see where they can be implemented just like in this conference there's a lot of cross-pollination of idea a lot of mixing of talent it's, it's pretty much the same what's going on in the networks and we need that in order to go ahead we need to spawn a, a, a much better we need to spawn a fitter more solid creature okay there's a, a lot risen up there this is the broad reach of kite power co-op and what we're wanting to create with this is a framework a, a plug-in framework almost where you can approach with your business and say what it is you do where you're going from just a meeting point a kind of extension of these these uh, forums that we're in at the moment the whether it is this uh, consortium meeting whether it is the online forum we're just trying to make sure that everyone can share uh, the knowledge that they've got and it's you know it's not a that people have approached with a fear of sharing so far certainly everyone's been very content to let what they know go in and this helps save time basically uh, the likes of CERN they've got a humongous data resource they can't analyze all of that themselves it's all pushed out to networks and the ideas that they, they want to examine are taken and fed back what you really want to create is a nice environment for people to come and work basically share their designs buy kit understand what the market is and if, if you look at the likes of a shopping center that's you know a lovely place those kids go there and hang out at the mall and you know do this that and the other there's a lot of parts to be considered in installation of an AWE setup especially when it comes to going commercial in the end so we're trying to just make a, a place where you can bring the issues associated with it we've said here light checks business equals business done right now that sounds like more regulatory framework and stuff but if you consider that the designs and the IP that are shared there are all open source then it seems that giving such power away could be a dangerous situation so the Kite Power Co-op have decided that these designs that they're releasing come with a little tie and that is that uh, commercial designs commercial ventures would be approved on community grounds that they are bringing benefit to those that they affect and these guidelines still have to be completed so there's talks ongoing on exactly what you know, structure how strict that's going to be applied now all the businesses that plug in to Kite Power Co-op we're hoping that they're always going to be bringing value always servicing the market and servicing the market is something that Kite Power Co-op itself is doing in that you are bringing a, a sort of a, a regulatory compliance um, you're, you're bringing an easy way for people to say yeah that's one of those designs and if it's met those checks um, that, that would, not just the community ones but the structural specifications that, that, that go with the, the designs that we've been sharing so far if you've met those checks then they've been tested to XYZ times it's going to be a lot easier to get your insurance in place for your AWE setup Like I said, the Kite Power Co-op would be an API now because we're open sourcing things we looked to the open source software movement where 
APIs are often used, uh, an application programming interface, uh, like say Android, again, uh, would be an approved procedures initiative. I've gone a wee bit too far here on this. Um, or a policy index, you know, it's going to be an evolving interaction guide, as that says. So it's just a way to help you align with your customers and, and understand that your customers and the communities that you work in are partners in what we're trying to do here. It's a way to move forward comfortably, knowing that you're you're not you know damaging what you what you're affecting. So there's a movie here of uh, kite structure, and this kite structure has got back lines controlling the the flow of a group of kites all together. This and yet another analogy for how the kite power co-op business, uh, the guidelines work as a, as a gang together, steering whole groups of businesses, kites in this, into the energy that, that's coming to them, that's cash flows or community that you're affecting. And so the rings that you're seeing here are just showing how to keep moving, how to keep your business in the, in the energy, in the, you know, in the flow is, is really what Kite Power Co-op is aiming for. As for Windswept and Interesting Limited, what, what do I do? Well, I work on designs uh, of kite structures, I work on parametric designs. Uh, a lot of what I do is in Rhino, which is a surface modelling uh, we're working on quasi 2D structures here, so that surfaces basically with kites. We're trying to keep them as uh, as thin, taut as possible. We're trying to always work in tension, work with surfaces or strings. One of the ways to work with arrays and uh, build in multi systems is to use this stuff called Grasshopper. Now, I love that language, it's fantastic, it's uh, very modular and, and blocky, you can see this, this is me programming, it's, it's a lot easier than certainly writing code. Um, this particular design used uh, my son's MIDI controller as an input, and I could, depending on whether I was animating it or setting it up, I'd, I'd use different bits there. And these were the, these are the inputs that describe what the whole arch that I was working on, the, the mesh, what that was going to look like. Uh, that was the, the mesh lines, and from that you had the panels going on top. It's, it's a, a fantastic way to work. The, the 3D language itself is, is an API. Uh, the, the Grasshopper language itself is an API environment. It's, it's a plugin within Rhino. So, Grasshopper is a plugin which can take all these different plugins. I mean, you can see I've got loads of uh, plugins on here, all these extra windows at the top are plugins, and some of the most common ones I use are uh, Kangaroo, that's uh, a physics engine, so you can do your finite element analysis, you've got Galapagos, which can, is a, a feedback sort of generation system where, where you do fitness testing of different designs, so you can vary designs and see what the end result is and end up with a, a best case design. You can feed in pretty much anything into it as an input because you've got C sharp, you've got VB.net, so you can interact with all sorts of gadgets out there. You, you know, you've got your webcam, so you can do steering control by webcam. You can analyze what you're, you're seeing. Um, so Firefly and, and Jihao, they, they do a lot of that sort of stuff. They're amazing what you can take in there. You can take in your Arduino or your uh, Raspberry Pi, so my kids or anyone could, you know, program bits that, that would have a live interaction and, you know, input and output into this parametric kite system. Uh, you've got mesh analysis, you've got um, outputs towards standard documents, so you, you've got all your, all your, your Word documents or, or, or your Excel spreadsheets, you've got, you, know, you can pull in weather data with Ladybug. So it's, it's phenomenally adaptable. It's, it's, a, it's a really nice way to, 
to send out ideas or to mess with ideas and really mix things up. And like I say, you can plug in all sorts of data. Uh, you know, I could put in a, a module here, which would be the weather, or it could be ropes and the, the tensile strengths of different ropes or the performance characteristics of the ropes uh, that a lot of the manufacturers here today have. Or it could be uh, data from different design bases, you know, different types of kite and how they might perform in a different weather type. So you can, you can have a feedback going there. Those of you from TU Delft, you've got a fantastic group there who work in this. I strongly suggest you, you, you sort of mix that about. And the, the good thing about these parametric designs is that they don't just sit still. This one sketch can make you know, a thousand different kites. Uh, and it, it's you know, fun to play with for a while, but you, see, you eventually find the limit of this kind. And I've moved on from this into a much simpler model now. Um, and I, you know, these are all shared on, online on kitepowercoop.org. I'm not the only daft you doing this. <laughs> There's a bunch of people out in the world who are sharing stuff open source, open source hardware. And there's one, let me see, Mesh there. Yeah. They've got 8,300, the last time I saw it, different um, sharing base, so a different you know, sharing economy, manufacturers in there. You've got ways of searching for your manufacturer and either sharing um, under NDAs or fully openly your designs. You've got opensource.com, which talks about all sorts of matters of hardware. Um, you've got Alchemator, where they're trying to describe how to make anything in procedural documents for how to go about making anything. Etsy, great place for makers to go and sell stuff. It's just a marketplace for anyone who makes little bits and bobs. Eh? Artisans, it can be huge projects going there. Um, hopefully, Kite Power Co-op is going to be joining this lot on a functional basis very shortly. Old models of how we got along um, are dropping everywhere. You got Airbnb where people rent their own accommodation. You could have nodes as an API for searching through Facebook and, and helping target campaigns. And it, just the, this more sociable world is. is, is the networks, they're, they're filling up, they're, they're starting to break a lot of barriers. You can gather a lot of momentum on, on networks and find out you're all of a sudden have, have some very large backing behind you. Okay, that's all very well and good for me to say in the comfort of my home, but uh, it's, I just realised that I do make it sound very much like an easy, cushy, beautiful future, but you're right, Think things go wrong, you're, you're going to be very right to question this, absolutely, I, I would question anything, I hear. Um, things of course are going to go wrong along the way, uh, tests are, are, are going to go wrong, but we've been sharing the dangers of tests, we've been sharing the, the safety cases throughout, and there's quite a few designs now have, have got you know, massive multi-point safety procedures and, and reasoning behind them. The, certainly with the, the shared designs that we've come out with, the, the safety case seems to have been pushed very heavily. So, I mean, what's, what's to fund in, in what I do? Um, not a lot. Coffee budget, really. Uh, you know, the, the design would be nice to have recompense for that, but there's a lot of open source software. When it comes to testing and designing and stuff, yeah, rope. I'm, I'm going to need ropes and materials, um, chandlery. But the, the power, you know, when, when it comes to mixing power into the situation, yeah, I'll need expertise from outside. Um, certainly, I've got the history in electronic engineering and stuff, but yeah, I'll, I'll be wanting to deal with larger bodies than just myself and, and the online group. 
How do you trust people that you, you don't really see? Well, they trust themselves and they don't seem completely nuts. And, well, if, you know, if you don't trust them, beat them. You know, do something better, basically. And won't you just get ripped off? Well, you will, no matter what. Uh, that's pretty much why this has come about, because uh, a lot of distrust and patenting systems and, and where the power base has come, we are wanting to, that's, we're wanting to break a lot of the traditional power model uh, uh, that the world exists. I don't believe, you know, your money should just make money for you. I think it should be based a lot more on effort. And that's, that's why I'm going about this. Hopefully it's going to work. <laughs> it certainly is so far. Everything seems to be proving quite, quite nice. Um, I think it's the only way to go about doing things. Um, I want to keep on doing things this way. I want to, you know, uh, I want the better future. Go ahead and make my ideas. That's fine. Yes, I, I wouldn't mind. I, I hope you're going to feed back your results. If you've got a pooter product because of it, if you, you're not sharing back, if you're not giving support to your your clients, you're going to be found out. You're going to be a dick, basically. That's up to you. It better not to be. Aren't you just a self-selected bunch of fellow hippie-minded studies? It's, uh, well, no. Because in the forums uh, online, we are really trying to shred the living daylights out of any design that comes along. We're really trying push it down to its absolute, you know, break it in any means possible until we can come out with a fit enough design that works. And whether that design is the business model, whether that design is the physical kite unit or the physical device that's going to be pulling energy out of the air, no, we're, we're I say we're pretty ruthless in what we're uh, attempting to do here. So, d don't be shy. Come and have your go at it. Come and Take your shots if you want. I'm pretty sure this group, this forum, is ready for you. I'm probably going to skip over this slide when I'm away, but basically what I'm saying is that physics is pretty easy to do compared to some ridiculously, ridiculously complex things. You, you can repeat stuff in physics, but when it comes to social areas like how to share money, how to share wealth and economy, that's very hard to judge because it's always in flux and you only ever have so many results that you can compare against and certainly not as many results as there are input factors. So we're looking for these key correlations. It's what's the best design for an ROI? And I believe it's the open design framework. Certainly if it's a return on investment of the number of people who put in, who work into it. But yeah, I think an actual return on investment overall uh, for the materials and for what's going to come out of it. Yeah, I think it's this, these open designs that we've been going towards. What's the fastest development method for ROI? Again, sharing open stuff. Sharing open source hardware ideas. You end up with an effective and efficient machine. It's a mix. So part of the physical scaling scenario is we've got these huge tracts of air to cover. We've got to pull massive amounts of energy, gang these lumps of energy together onto generators. Now that's, that's tricky. When it comes to the actual physical scaling, I think safety is always the key factor in this. All the time, we're going to be looking at avoiding danger. And the systems we, we've encouraged, the systems that we seem to have favoured so far, are ones where you can steer down to the ground, you can choke it, you can shoot it down, cut it down, but something's always going to know when it. Ones that have inherent stability uh, built in, ones that have ability to withstand components breaking off, um, ones that are held front, back, left and centre, ones that can be um, fractally 
assembled, added to, taken away from. Things that are almost organic, things that grow, things that have this inherent sort of life skill almost. Uh, the likes of Kite Power Co op, uh, the likes of Kite Labs, Dave Santos' designs uh, for the Mothra Kite system. Fantastic, and that's very much what a lot of my work is based on, is Dave Santos's Mothra designs. They, they have this inherent stability, they have this ability to be able to be steered and pull things about the place, and they just have this lightness and scalability and power. Now, if you look at many other designs, how are they ever going to scale? How are you going to be able to sequentially launch your one massive kite? How are you going to be able to make something that huge that's going to lift itself into the air? When it comes to the, the load path kind of designs where you've got this ground-based, you know, wing and ground effect, massive kite where you can stage launch little sections, that's much more conceivable and understandable and physically possible than huge single point launches with single lines and, and many single point of failure possibilities along them. The, the network setups this seem to make an awful lot more sense. Another thing in these network setups is that you have many small stiffened elements which can perform very well. So if you've got this leading uh, this load path line along the front, that's a stiff edge. Okay, so your front edge, your leading edge of your kite, even if you are going to the side, that's still most of the way to a leading edge. You can stiffen that against the back, whether there's tiny battens in elements, kick soles or not. You can stiffen the back off against yet another load path, and you can steer below that on a, another load path almost line. So these, if you, you align multiple arrays of small elements which can have very high power characteristics, no one's going to deny it. the power that comes out of a small kite, uh, you know, on a good day, you know, any, any kind of day, you know, a small kite really will haul along. And it's, it's these, it's the ability to be able to gang these together through the fact that we've got these, these rope load paths which can be scaled up towards the, you know, where the, the tension is going to be in them. That's the, the, the inherent strength of these, these load paths is just is a fantastic resource and it's, it's something that's being wasted at the moment otherwise, I believe. I'm definitely not going to get the chance to talk about this when we're in Berlin, so I'm going to say it now anyway, online. Um, I think what, what, what Bjork has done with the Biophilia project is kind of similar in a way to what we're trying to do with our descriptions of energy from wind and how to get them out of the air. And it's a whole new paradigm of, it's a whole new way of, that we're all trying to address, of getting energy from the air onto the ground. Now, Bjork is a, a wonderful musician, for those of you, know, you all know. She's got musical instruments that, that work from new perspectives and she's got musical notation that she's developed for this project that seems much more in tune with the nature that she was brought up in. It just made a lot more sense. The, there are new apps released for, for kids to be able to stretch and pull music about the place. There's new instrumentation that uses electricity and uh, uses gravity. And you know, she's just bloody genius, if you ask me. I think she's wonderful. If we can get her to go to rock the kite, oh, that'd be amazing. So I think this, what I'm trying to say is, kite networks are basically where you want to go. The lot of you, no matter who you are, you're, you're going to see this. We're, we're, we're going to proliferate, I believe. And. It's kind of on top of you. You all are making connections of your own out there in this conference. 
And that's really what it's about, and we just want to see that continue. So we've got a belief in open source hardware for fantastic rapid development of projects. We reckon it's effective and efficient, which you know, often people are seeing, see that you know, two, two different sides of the same coin. We want things done right. We want it to be seen to be done right. We don't want to get a bad name before we even start. And, yeah, improvable. It takes you, it takes all of you to plug into it and get it to happen. So, Kuiper Co. It's for you, basically. Open designs and open skies.